All right, so today we're going to look at Max. And what has been formerly known as Max MSP is now just called Max. And it's free to use while in trial mode, which means you can't save anything. <coughs> and then there's a couple of options for licensing it, which are not all that bad anymore. So what is Max? Well, Max is a, what would they call a visual programming language. And it's really what what is more more so a data flow um, programming language where you have little objects in that connect to other objects like sliders and knobs and sine waves and square waves and samples and you can basically make your own plug-in type systems or applications and then you can go way beyond that of course but it deals with MIDI it deals with audio um, and it deals with programming logic so there's an element of programming into it now why use Max when you can just buy a saucy bundle of plugins well Max is really there it's that tool that you want to use when you don't have a plugin that can do it or you need a system that operates differently from a DAW like logic or reason so Max is really there for you to build a system to create music in a slightly different workflow so let's talk about the big stuff this is a really an introduction to the as though you've never used it before you've never seen this before and it is a lot different than we've seen in previous versions so this is now called max 7 it has this little icon here with a with what looks like a 7 previous versions had lots of colors this is a very different version that we're looking at here so um, I'm gonna close this window you may just see this when you first start it really depends sometimes you'll see a, a welcome window what we're going to do is just create a new patcher and that's the window that you just saw so this is what's called a patcher and it's basically a blank canvas and it can be very uh, scary and liberating at the same time where scary in that what the heck do i do um, there's no real like you know little clippy like um, Windows used to have and said you, you're looks like you're writing a letter. Do you need help? None of that's really there in more or less, but there's plenty of ways to get help that I'll show you um, And then I'm going to talk about all the little icons and how these are sort of Zoned to do different things. Okay, so we have the big space is, a, is our patcher All right, so we have other views and other windows that we can look at so you can go to what's called the console and you may want this up while you're while you're making a patch this will basically display information that you have either told it to display or other people have told it to display it may give you errors it may tell you progress it may do lots of things it's sort of like a general text console that you'd see on a lot of software programs so we can get rid of that there's also um, the clue window which this is used for um, I believe when you ask for a clue I haven't really used that yet so try it out on your own then there's the sidebar max console so you can put it in the actual window and move it around with you okay we also have your standard file menu so you can do new patches new templates um, you can do uh, max projects um, we're just going to be doing patches your standard opening close saving exporting okay for the most part we're going to be new doing new patchers perhaps opening a patcher and then saving it your editing is going to look a lot like text editing because in general you are more or less editing similarly as you would text or images okay so there's cut and paste and delete all the standard shortcuts apply undo okay all right, and then as we go, we're going to go through other menu options. Now, on the actual patcher window, there's a whole bunch of little icons. And the nice thing is that as you scroll over them, they give you the information that you want. So up here, we have our, our display, which is sort of our, our universal display. We can zoom in all the way you know, to four times, or we can zoom back and look at our patcher. And you'll see why this is, comes in handy later when your patches get big. And really difficult to use which hopefully you've learned how not to do that by this point by the point that we get to that okay so up here 
this is um, basically our list of objects. So in Max, everything is called an object. And um, I'll introduce these later, but I'll just show you a few. We have some really basic objects. That looks like a tic-tac-toe game, but it's not. So this is what's called a toggle. It's an on-off switch. X means on. And this is called a button or a bang. Okay, so to contrast, here's something like a slider. So these are interface or graphical interface objects that we can use to interact with our, um, with our patches and our logic. We also have some more complex objects. Um, we also have things like comments. and messages and we'll talk about all of these and just generic objects we have this little search bar you can search anything in here just like google but it kind of searches within max so just search something we'll try it real quick and it tells you what your search can what types of object objects you can find with your search so this can come in handy when you're learning all right so that's the top bar is your object bar. The sidebar here is going to be your utility bar. So you have things like your calendar, which this is new. You have what's called the inspector, which is basically like any inspector. When you select an object, it tells you information about the object. You get reference or documentation, which will come in handy for learning. You have your console window. So there's another way to get to your console and you can do your lessons. So I haven't explored this. This is a lesson browser. These, some of these might be paid and some of them might be free, but you wanna look into those if you want more lessons than what you're getting for free here. All right, and then this is your audio on off switch. So just like your standard on off, this turns audio on and off. We'll be using that later. All right, on the left side here is your, your browsers. So mainly content browsers, but there you can browse files and it's going to basically document all the files that you've looked at or created or used. You have object browsers. So you can go and narrow down with the hundreds of objects that at Max has. You can start to filter them and look at which ones you might be able to use. This is an audio browser. So there's some free audio files that Max comes with for you to use and get started. Not much, not like Logic in any way. There's a video browser. Is there a video? There's a video browser. So if you want to practice using video, if that interests you, here's some videos to get started with. The image browser as well. You can manipulate images. And then these are called Mac snippets. Um, we're not going to use those. And then these are some plugins. Vizies, which is basically for visual displays and beeps. And this is all very new, so we're kind of getting used to it. But these are sort of built in um, patches that have already been made for you, which is really nice because if you just wanted to create some sort of, you know, um, basic uh, granular synthesizer, well, there you go. You get you can get started with that and any collections that may exist or that may have been created. Okay, so you can look at those in more detail. All right, now at the very bottom, we have our editing um or editing tools. So this is the locking of the patcher. Notice how the little uh, grid goes away. So what locking does means that you can interact now with your patcher. You won't move things around to be able to edit them. Look at some of these objects. See how we can move these around, but I can't actually interact with them. I need to lock the patcher. Now I can interact with them. Okay. So that, that has a shortcut. The shortcut is Command E, or I guess it's not there anymore. Command E, if you see Command, Command E, Command E, Command E, there we go. All right, so you're going to want to know that shortcut first and foremost because you don't want to constantly be clicking on this little lock. So just Command E for edit mode. All right, then we have um, uh, basic ways of, of organizing your patcher windows if you have multiple there's something called presentation mode, which is really nice if you want to give your patch to somebody and not have to have them look at all the Max-like stuff on the back end and just give them a front end. 
like a couple buttons, a slider, and some numbers. You can show a grid if you want to work on a, a more precise grid. And there's little um, dots that you can maybe see. And then there's the debugging mode, which is something that really you're probably going to use more in advanced setting. But if you're if you're getting bugs in your patch, you can't figure out where there's an error, you can use this mode in order to help you do that. All right, so those are the big things. There's also the one thing I did forget is the help. There's a lot of ways to get help. So if you get stuck on things, you can search here, you can search here. You can also get help by on any object. Let's just grab a few here and make a new one here. If you control click on it, it'll get the help file. And it tells you all about th what this object does and different variations of how to work with it. In fact, it may be too much information, but it gets you started. So if you have no idea, so control click help. Here you go. Here's an example of this object being used. And you can even go in edit mode and copy these things. So command C, copy, close it, and paste it. And now you have yourself a working patch. All right. So maybe that was a bit too much all at once, but we'll don't worry, we'll get into it. All right, so let's talk about the types of objects we have. I'm going to bring down all of them that are up here. And these also have shortcuts that I'm going to explain to you later. Okay, so let's go through some of the basic objects. So this is just an object. You can type words in here, and sometimes it will give you hints, kind of like Google says, maybe you're searching for this. Right, you can even just type letters and kind of see what exists from on the menu. Okay, you can also, if you know the object that you want, you can just type it in and hit enter. And then it creates an object which will have basically a couple of things. It's going to have these little circles at the top and the bottom. This is an inlet. This is an outlet. It's going to have the name of the object. And then it's going to possibly have stuff inside the object, like stuff here, um, which are called arguments. And maybe that gi did that give us an error? Yeah. So there's no extra arguments for noise. So that means that we don't have to write in anything. We'll kind of get to that in a little bit. So this is your kind of generic object that you fill with a name. And this is a little program. Essentially, this is what's called a noise generator or a white noise generator. So if we go there to help, you can see generate white noise. And it gives you an example of the white noise. All right. So this is like a little program. And the output is the white noise. The input in this one is nothing. But every, every object has to have an input or an inlet at least. All right, we'll talk about those in a little bit. This is what's called a message. So this can be anything. It can be a word. It could be a number. It could be a symbol. Okay, anything can go in here. And basically, anything can go in here and get passed to something else as an input. So this is really handy if you want to save messages to work with other objects. So we'll deal with that later. Let's get rid of there we go. Also notice you can change the size of these objects by just selecting them and just like any image editor. It's kind of kind of cool. All right, this is a comment. You definitely want to comment a lot. Okay? Because you first of all need to remember what you did, but you may want other people to know what you did, like your instructors. So you just put in comments, and really, I, I won't say that there you can comment too much because you certainly can, but you want to comment enough that you definitely know what you're doing. And if you're going to give somebody a patch to use, make sure that they also know what they're doing. Okay, so use these a lot. Um, the shortcut for comment is C, just straight up letter C. All right. Cool. So you remember this. This is a toggle. And we're going to create a new object called print. 
and print is nice because it's going to print whatever comes in its inlet here to this window. And so we can go in edit mode. Remember com command E. One zero one zero one zero. Okay. So a toggle is just literally a one and a zero, but that in in computers means on or off. So that's pretty. Oops, that's pretty handy. We're going to need on and off switches. Bang. This is a button. And buttons only have one state. And in Max, it's called bang. Not a violent bang. It's a friendly bang saying, do this. Okay. So other programs know that bang means to execute something. Whereas a toggle means turn it on or turn it off. Okay. So there's a slight difference between the two. Got bigger. All right. Then we have this, which is a number. In edit mode, we can see it's going to just print out the numbers sequentially, negative, positive. And since I made this what's called a floating point number, no, I didn't. Didn't I? I thought I did. No, I didn't. Here's another version. If you hit F, it stands for floating point number. You can see I can do decimal point. Okay, so the other one, if you, if you hit I, is called an integer and this can only do the counting number no decimals okay it's probably my least favorite feature of max because i pretty much prefer everything just to be floats because sometimes i forget and it causes problems so i never use integers um, only in rare occasions rare occasions okay finally we have something called a slider we also have a knob All right, so there you go. These are the basic objects. Oh, and I forgot this one. This is a more specialized object from our, our more, um, these are more uh, nuanced objects, but they all are graphical. So you can try these. This is just simply something that can turn on audio. And notice how this button down here turned on. So they actually work in the same way. And you can turn down the volume if it's too loud for you. All right. So try some things out. See what you can do. Remember, if, since you're in your trial mode, you probably can't save anyway. And um, the next um, video, we're going to actually try doing some um, basic programs and what we call data flow.